Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, Et Spes Nostra Salute, A Te Clamamus, Exule Spirii Neve, A Te Suspiramus, Gementes et Plentes, In Ad Lacrima, Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today, the readings are going to be for Friday, for the 14th Sunday of the year. But the prayers that are said this day are said in honor of St. Kateri Tekawitha, a native woman who gave her life to the Lord and was a great inspiration and witness to many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we prepare our hearts calling to mind our sins, and asking the Lord for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who desired the Virgin, blessed Kateri Tekawitha, to flower among Native Americans in a life of innocence, grant through her intercession that when all are gathered into your church from every nation, tribe, and tongue, they may magnify you in a single canticle of praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Now, as all of you are seated, I just invite you to pay careful attention to this first reading. We're continuing salvation history. It's the reunion between Jacob and Joseph. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel set out with all that was his. When he arrived at Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. There, God, speaking to Israel in a vision by night, called, Jacob, Jacob. He answered, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt. For there I will make you a great nation. Not only will I go down to Egypt with you, I will also bring you back here after Joseph has closed your eyes. So Jacob departed from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel put their father and their wives and children on the wagons that Pharaoh had sent for his transport. They took with them their livestock and their possessions that they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Thus Jacob and all his descendants migrated to Egypt. 
his sons and his grandsons, his daughters and his granddaughters, all his descendants he took with him to Egypt. Israel had sent Judah ahead to Joseph so that he might meet him in Goshen. On his arrival in the region of Goshen, Joseph hitched the horses to his char chariot and rode to meet his father in Goshen. As soon as Joseph saw him, he flung himself on his neck and wept a long time in his arms. And Israel said to Joseph, At last, I can die now that I have seen for myself that Joseph is still alive. The word of the Lord. The response, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. They are not put to shame in an evil time. In days of famine, they have plenty. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress, and the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to all truth and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents, simple as doves. But be aware of men they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake. It's a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say, for it will not be you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. So we are very quickly coming to the end of the book of Genesis. We've been walking through salvation history now for several weeks in, in that book. Next week we start Exodus, the great story of liberation of the people of Israel. But today we have this encounter. I gotta tell you, I'm a sentimental fool and when I'm going through an airport, and nowadays, you know, with all of the security, it's changed, right, from the old days when you could meet people at the gate, but you go out of the airport, past the security line, and you watch the encounters with people who've been waiting to see a loved one. Maybe it's, it's been, you know, weeks, months. Maybe it's been longer than that. And they've got signs and they've got posters and they see that person come off that, that security doorway and they get mobbed. It's beautiful, it's heartwarming, it's precious. It's a reunion. I, I gotta tell you, I tear up every time I see these clips from the people who are like in military service, 
and they've been away for long chunks of time and then they surprise mom or spouse or kids or grandkids and and it's that shock awe delight tears laughter joy and a hug that's so tight they're going to lose their breath because they don't want to let go they have missed this person they have longed for this person and they're present that's the encounter here jacob who we know has now taken the name israel after his wrestling with the angel hasn't seen his kid for years thought he was dead then comes to find out his older sons had lied about him got to deal with that and joseph the years he rotted in prison being sold as a slave wondering what his father was he alive wondering if he'd ever see him again and now in this position of authority and power coming out with his chariot to meet dad and these poignant words they just fling themselves to each other's arms weeping and these words at last i can die i've seen that my son is alive the relationships that we have these reunions that we have here on earth they're precious they're sacred they're holy they are a gift from god and these bonds that we have when they are rooted in that very gift of faith and life and love we take that with us to heaven because remember folks every one of these reunions every one of these powerful emotional deeply connected encounters is a glimpse of what awaits us in the hope that we have for eternal life that there will please god come a day our hope is in the lord in this that beyond sickness and death grief and loss pain and suffering this kind of reunion this kind of passionate intensity this kind of love that overflows our hearts and spreads out into our lives that's what we long for when we stand before jesus that's what we place our hope in that he came to give us life and give it abundantly and this encounter between jacob and joseph father and son as Joseph embraces his father on earth, we await the day when we will stand before our father in heaven. And friends, to ponder for a moment how we then take here on earth the sacred trust of the relationships we have, pour energy into them, they're a gift from God, but being mindful that the relationships we have here on earth are meant to help us prepare for that day when we step from this life into the next. And so, like Joseph, like Jacob, if we've had to carry pain in our hearts over someone lost from us, if we've had to carry grief and doubt and fear, if we've had to walk through our own valley of shadow, God has more in store. God's love, God's mercy and forgiveness is greater than the grave. And so today, in light of this passage, a key part of salvation history we turn to the fulfillment of that history, Jesus. And we put our trust in the Lord for that day when we will be reunited with our loved ones. That if there's anything that's not fitting and heavenly in our hearts right now, to cast it out, to keep our eyes fixed on Christ, to turn away from what is evil, to turn to what is good, and put our trust in the one that we hope for will lead us into that great embrace in heaven. May God help us. May God bless us all. We pray this day for the church that we will be living examples of a love that overflows our hearts to reach out to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones for whom we are separated and by whom we are separated either by death or distance. That we pray that in the hands of Jesus, they're held safe. In the hands of Jesus, they're protected. And in the hands of Jesus, we will one day join them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We also pray for those relationships that are broken, wounded, past hurts, troubles, trials, sins, misunderstandings. 
We pray that God's grace will touch those relationships that are wounded and broken. That God's grace will be able to bring about healing and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those families that have been torn apart because of poverty, violence, war, because of injustice. For all the places around the world where people have been separated and torn apart. We pray for their healing, comfort, and peace. We pray to the Lord. For all who are sick. For our loved ones and family members, friends, those that we watch who suffer. We pray for their healing. We pray for their strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. For the intention of this Mass, Dolly Cosgrove, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. O God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, on this feast of St. Kateri Tekawitha, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress and useless worry as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the one who seeks refuge in him. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. A couple of announcements. The first is the Cathedral Construction Project public announcement service uh, needs. Uh, we have completely ripped up all of the blacktop and all of the sidewalk around the cathedral on the parking lot side. It's all gone. The only other thing that needs to be ripped out right now is the stairwell going down to Cress Hall from the parking lot and a little bit of the uh, concrete sidewalk that goes into the backside of the parish office. What that means though is this weekend, while the parking lot will be available, 
it will be a gravel sand mix. We will cut all of that out next week right away. They will cut down to about two feet down before they redo that foundation with sand and classified gravel. And so anyone who is parking in the parking lot, you still can, but get this, there's two things. You can only, if you're in the parking lot, you either have to go around the building to get into the uh, cathedral by the ramp, or you have to go up the stairs uh, by where the choir are located. So there's an entrance that's open, but you have to use great caution. And so I, I just ask people to be very careful when they're going in for mass for those who come to the cathedral this weekend. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Thank you, Father.